In addition to the myriad of platformers, puzzle games and shoot 'em ups the CPC also played host to a number of board games. This is nothing spectacular in and of itself, since most consoles have featured a board game conversion at some point or another, but today's title is a unique board game that most people have never even heard of. It's a CPC only game that is so obscure it doesn't even have its own Wikipedia entry. Yet. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Power Play, the game of the gods. Power Play was released in 1986 by Arcana, which is another esoteric company that I don't even know what else they did in their operational lifespan. Power Play is a hybrid between a board game and a quiz game, and it's designed for two, three, or four players. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any AI, so you'll either have to grab some friends or try to outsmart yourself. Not as easy as it sounds, let me tell you, I've yet to do it. The title screen introduces our heroes, the Cyclops, Hercules, the Minotaur, and a Satyr. You may think these four characters are the team captains, but you'd be wrong. In fact, all four characters appear in all four teams. Each team contains four units, and to begin with, you get one Cyclops, the team leader, and three Hercules. Three Hercules, you may be wondering, how does that work? Because Zeus can do whatever the hell he wants, that's how. Look what he did to the Telkines, are you going to argue with him? Exactly. As for the other two characters, you have to earn them. As a wise sage once said, knowing is half the battle. Unfortunately, he never told me what the other half was. However, Powerplay gave me the answer. The other half of the battle is using what you know to go Super Saiyan, or whatever the Greeks called it, and transform into a monster so you can bring the pain much more effectively. Yes folks, once one of your characters answers a certain amount of questions correctly, they'll turn into a creature from Greek legend. Either the legendary Minotaur, who'll rend your head from your shoulders and devour your very soul, or the Satyr, who'll... um... hump you to death? Yeah, apparently they didn't do much research into what satires did, or what powers they had. And that's a shame, because it's not like Greek mythology had a lack of fearsome creatures that they could have used to pieces. Can you imagine the meeting where they decided that? Well sir, how about Euronymous, a hell wrought zombie who devours the flesh off his still living prey, leaving nothing but a pile of bones, cursed to writhe in agony for all eternity? No, we can't include him in a game, better replace him with Torgo. Gameplay itself is really quite simple. In each turn, you pick one of your characters. That character can then move one square in any of the eight major compass points. Once they have moved, they will be asked a question, and the topic of the question depends on the colour of the square they land on. For example, red gets you sport and leisure, green gets you science and technology, and so on. Having been given your question, you are presented with four possible answers, and asked to pick which one you think is the right one. If you get it right, you get some points. If you get it wrong, you don't. Regardless as to the outcome, once you've answered your question, it's time for the next player to take their turn. If you try and make one of your characters occupy the same space as an opposing team member, then it's a knowledge off to decide who gets the space. The attacker is posed a question, and if they get the question right, their opponent's health decreases. If they get it wrong, their own health decreases. If either piece's health hits zero, they are removed from the board. In the grand traditions established by Stratego, Chess, and Rock'em Sock'em Robots, the way in which you win this game is the total annihilation of your opponent's forces. So that's the gameplay, but what about the game as a whole? Well, normally I wouldn't mention this, but this time I absolutely have to. I think the graphics are spectacular. I mean, look at it! You're in a temple atop Mount Olympus, pottering around the board while those majestic yellow lizard things look down on you, much to the delight of their toned, busty, naked, oiled up and surprisingly off-camera mistresses. Those Greeks sure knew how to build a pantheon, I tell you what. Also, in order to stop the game getting stale, there are four banks of questions to load. On top of that, you can create your own if you wish, which gives the game INFINITE REPLAY VALUE! value, 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 value. At the slight cost of extending the game's length by six hours each time you want to enter your own questions. <clears throat> Something that surprised me about the game is that, when I came to record it for the video, I found a lot of the questions are just as relevant today as they were when the game came out. There were a lot of quiz games for the CPC which ask, for example, who is the captain of the England football team? The answer, at time of recording, is John Terry, but the in-game answer is usually Brian Robson. But Powerplay asks very general knowledge questions, such as where were ABBA from, or which chemical is denoted by the symbol PB. This is a good thing, because it means you can still play the game today without it feeling dated. On the downside, the game's controls are complicated and may take a lot of getting used to, mainly because they're kind of screwy. 
For example, M moves you down into the left, Z moves you down into the right. How, on a standard QWERTY keyboard, does that make any degree of sense? Furthermore, the controls are pretty unresponsive, and you often have to press and hold the key for the game to register you're doing anything. The only other downside of the game is that a single round can go on for a really long time. Presumably, Arcana assumed they were actually programming a game for some gods who are immortal and subsequently have lots and lots of time to fritter away on quiz-based video games like this one. Overall, however, in spite of its flaws, I'd actually recommend Powerplay to anybody who has the time and the friends required to make a good go of it. If you haven't, then the game kind of falls somewhat short. There's just no way you can get as much fun out of a game when you can't set up an elaborate scheme to knife your companions in the back. And I'm done. So until next time, goodbye.